authorities. He knows the science of devotion. And we can learn how to worship and how to please the Lord by following the example of Prahlad Maharaj. So Prahlad Maharaj is very expert in remembering the Lord. If you read Sanatana Goswami's book, which is called Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, he describes how Narada Muni was searching for devotees who had received the greatest mercy from the Lord. So he went to different people and at one point he had come to Prahlad because he was convinced that Prahlad must be the greatest devotee of the Lord. Why? Because the Lord appeared to protect him. The Lord saved him from the danger. His father, his demoniac father was trying to kill him in so many ways. And finally, Lord Nishringadev appeared and fought with Prahlad's father and killed him. So Narada Muni was saying to Prahlad that you must be the greatest devotee of the Lord. But Prahlad said, no, no, he said, I'm not a great devotee. He said, I only remember the Lord, but I don't serve him. He said, the people who serve the Lord, they are much better than me. Prahlad said, all I do is I remember the Lord. When Prahlad, when his life was being threatened by his demoniac father, Prahlad did not pray to the Lord for protection. He just, it was his nature to always remember the Lord. Prahlad is a devotee of Lord Vishnu. And Lord Vishnu appears in many different forms. And in order to protect Prahlad, he appeared in the form of Narsimha. And there, there's a reason for that, why the Lord took this form, of course. The Lord had to come in a form which would meet all the different benedictions which Lord Brahma had given to Haranyakashipu. Haranyakashipu had worshipped Lord Brahma to get benediction. His very name, you can understand the mentality of this person, Aranya Kashipu. Why he is such a demon? Because he's very fond of two things. He likes gold and he likes also a soft bed. <laughs> he likes to sleep. He likes to relax on a soft bed. And he's very attached to gold. So Haranya means gold and Kasipu means soft bed. This is the mentality, this is the thinking of a materialistic person, a demon. In Bhagavad Gita, there are two natures described. There is Daivi Sampat and Asuri Sampat. Daivi Sampat the divine nature, the devotees. Prahlad is a devotee. He has a divine nature. His father, however, was a different kind of person. His father was an asura, a demon. He had a very different mentality. His father just wanted to conquer and enjoy the material world. He wanted to live forever. And he worshipped Lord Brahma to get benedictions like that. 
Of course, Lord Brahma told him, he said, I cannot give you immortality. Lord Brahma said, I am not immortal. I have to die. So I cannot give you something which I don't possess. So Harani Kashipu then asked for so many different conditions from Lord Brahma. He asked, I should not die in the day and I should not die in the night. So Lord Brahma said, all right. And then he said, I should not die on the land or in the water or in the air. So Lord Brahma said, all right. And he sh I should not be killed by any man or any animal or any demigod. So the Lord said, all right. But Brahma said, all right. He's giving these different benedictions. Different benedictions. Brahma said, all right, yes. Tatastu. Meaning, I give, all right, I give you that benediction. But, oh, Lord Nishingadev, or Lord Vishnu is more smarter than Harani Kashipu. And Lord Vishnu overcome all of these different conditions and ultimately he was able to kill Harani Kashipu. Anyway, that's, that's the story of the Lord Nusringadev. But the prayer of Prahlad Maharaj, which we want to talk to, that, oh my Lord Nusringadev, who possesses nails and teeth like thunderbolts. So Lord Nishingade is ferocious to those who are not devotees. When we see the form of Lord Nishingade, some people are frightened. But devotees worship this form of Lord Nishingade. To a devotee, it's a friendly form, but to those who are materialistic and asuras, then they are afraid because they feel threatened. We want to understand Lord Nishrinjade. He has nails and teeth like thunderbolts. He used his nails, ultimately, he used his nails to rip the chest of Haranyakashi. It's very fearful. He then took the intestines from Haranyakashi out from his belly and put them around his neck. Just like I have a garland here. So Haranyakashi also had a garland of intestines. He took the intestines from the belly of Harani Kashipu and put them around his neck. And then this way there was a lot of blood over the body of the Lord of Shrinjade. So this is frightening to materialistic people, to those who are in the bodily concept of life. It instills a lot of fear in people. But for the devotees, there's no fear. Rather, they feel love and devotion for Lord Nishringadev. The example is given, just like a lion can be very fierce and ferocious, but the cubs, the cubs of the lion are not afraid of the lion because they know this is my mother or this is my father. They're not afraid of the, the lion. They take shelter of the lion. So in the same way, a devotee is not afraid of Lord Nishingade. Rather, we take shelter of Lord Nishingade. And Lord Nishingade protects the devotee. So the nails and the teeth of Lord Nishringadev are for ripping apart the demons 
but not for the devotees. Those who are devotees, the Lord is pleased to see them. Just like after Lord Nishringadev killed Haradhi Kashipu, Lord Nishringadev was very angry. He was very angry and no one could calm him down. Do you ever get like that? Do you get so angry, nobody can make you calm? You're so angry, oh, you become so enraged, you're yelling and screaming and shouting. So Lord Nishringadev was very angry. I hope you don't get like that. You know, sometimes you know, get angry, people can be angry three days, you know, they're angry. They, they're angry, they go to sleep, wake up, they're still angry. <laughs> Goes on. So, Lord Nishringadev was very angry. Why was he angry? Because Haranyakashipu had been trying to kill Prahlad. And Prahlad was a devotee. He had taken shelter of the Lord. So Lord Nishringadev was very angry. To see this this behavior of Haranya Kashipu. Haranya Kashipu was saying, I'm going to cut your head off, Prahlad. And he was waving his sword and he was going to cut off the head of Prahlad. So Lord Nishringadev was very angry and he appeared and then he fought and killed Haranya Kashipu. So, Lord Nishingadev is very kind to his devotees. He always wants to protect his devotees. So all of us, we have to also take shelter of Lord Nishingadev, especially if we're ever in any danger. Lord Nishingadev also come, he also came in the Kali Yuga. Just 500 years ago, Lord Nishingadev appeared in Mayapur, in the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. What happened was, there was a nasty person called the Chan Kazi. The Chan Kazi was the the ruler, he was like the magistrate of this, of the Mayapur area, Mayapur district. And it happened that he came with his soldiers and they came to the home of Srivas Thakur and they told them, no more Kirtan. They, they, they had, they were, the Mohammedans were angry because the devotees were having kirtan and making a lot of noise. So the Chan Kazi came with the soldiers and he told everyone, no more kirtan. And he, he was so angry, he took the madanga, smashed it on the ground. And of course, 500 years ago, all the madangas were clay. <laughs> Clay, even, even 50 years ago, all the madangas were clay. Nowadays, we get metal madangas and polystyrene madangas and so many things. But in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were all clay. A very nice sound, the best sound, but easily broken. And the Chankasi came and threw the madanga on the ground. And he warned them, no more kirtan. And, and so it happened, Lord Chaitanya, he gathered all the people together and they protested and they marched in protest that we have to have sankirtan, we're going to do sankirtan. And the thousands and the lakhs of people, they all came and they all chanted and danced and they came to the home of the Chan Kasi. And the Chan Kasi was afraid. This was the day after 
the Chan Kazi had smashed the Madanga. So anyway, the Chan Kazi then became very fearful, but he came out and he met with Lord Chaitanya. And the two of them discussed together. And the Chan Kazi told Lord Chaitanya, he said that, I'm not going to stop Sankirtan anymore. And Lord Chaitanya said, oh, just yesterday you came and you told everyone you no more Sankirtan. But now you say, no problem, that we can all do Sankirtan. So what happened? What changed your mind? And the Chan Kazi said, I will tell you. And he opened his shirt. And when he opened his shirt, you could see on the chest of the Chan Kazi, there were big scratches right across the chest. Scratches which were not made by any human, but were made by a lion. And the Chan Kasi described how that night after he broke the Madanga, he said he went to sleep, but in the night, someone jumped on his chest and grabbed him by the neck and shook him and told him, if you ever break my Madanga again, I will rip you to shreds. And to show him what he meant, he took his claw and right across the chest, he gave these big scratches across the chest of the Chan Kazi. So this was Lord Nishringade who appeared to protect the devotees and to warn this Chan Kazi not to stop the Sankirtan and never to break the Madanga trunk. And the Chan Kazi told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I promise from this day on, I will never again, we will never again stop the Sankirtan. Not only will I not stop the Sankirtan, but my descendants in the future, all of my descendants, none of them will ever stop the Sankirtan of the Vaishnava. And if you go to Mayapur today, the Chankasi Samadhi is there. And it's a place visited by all the devotees. When we go to Mayapur, we see the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. And we also go to see the Samadhi of the Chankasi. Because he also became a devotee. He became a devotee. And he never stopped the Sankirtan, and even during the time of the partition of India, when there was a lot of tension, no one in Mayapur ever stopped the Sankirtan. No one ever interfered with the Sankirtan. And the Chankazi Samadhi is there, and the Chankazi's nickname was Champa. So there's a big champaka tree and it's been growing there for 500 years. And beside that champaka tree, there's a name tree because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is called Nimai. So the two trees grow together, the champaka tree and the name tree. One symbolizing Chankasi and the other symbolizing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Lord Nishringadeva appears even in this age, Kali Yuga. He comes to protect the devotees. We want to understand how Prahlad prays. Who is it? What does it mean to be a devotee? Prahlad Maharaj describes that he says to Lord Nishringade, please vanquish our demonic-like desires for fruit, fruitive activities. Fruitive activities mean we do activities to gain, to get material gain. 
we want to enjoy money, we want to enjoy opulent living, luxury, comfort, we want to enjoy this. This is all in the category of fruitive activities. Where we want to enjoy the results of our work. Just like you've come here to Dubai, you've come to enjoy the results. You, you came to work and you hope you can enjoy the results. 